G'day, g'day. It's Nick here, and this bloke is Rover, one of our eastern brown snakes that we keep here for educational display. And this has to be one of the most famous snakes in all of Australia. Everybody hopefully knows what an eastern brown snake is. But in this video, I'm gonna try and share with you 10 facts that I think you guys didn't know about one of the most famous snakes probably on the planet. Stick around. So fact number one is that the eastern brown snake, as well known as he is, is just one small part of a much bigger family of snakes. You see, all up, we have nine species of brown snakes here in Australia. The eastern brown probably being the most well-known, but the other well-known ones are things like the dugite and maybe the western brown. But on top of that, you've got things like the northern brown, the ingrams brown, the speckled brown, the peninsula brown, the ring brown snake, and uh, the strap snouted brown snake. So nine species all up. So yeah, the eastern brown might be the most famous uh, one, but here's just one small part of a much bigger family. Fact number two is that while we call this guy the Eastern Brown Snake, he's not exactly confined to the Eastern coast of Australia. It is true they're found over the entirety of the East Coast, pretty much all of Victoria, pretty much all of New South Wales, all of Queensland, with the exception of sort of dense rainforests. But they're also found over South Australia, parts of the Northern Territory, both in the central region and in Northern region of Northern Territory. But they even push into Western Australia, found in the sort of far Eastern stretches of the Kimberley. So they're found in every mainland state of Australia. The only place you don't find these guys is Tasmania. So Eastern Brown by name, but National Brown Snake by distribution. Fact number three, is that the massive distribution of these guys doesn't just include pretty much all of mainland Australia, but there is actually several small populations of eastern brown snake on the southern parts of the island of New Guinea. Now, there's some debate whether they should be considered their own subspecies. There's not a lot of evidence to support it, but basically they're eastern browns in one form or another. Now, this means these guys are actually the only member of the brown snake family to be outside Australia's territory. So yeah, brown snake, despite being an Australian icon, are also found up in New Guinea. Fact number four is that the Eastern Brown Snake is the largest of the nine species of brown snakes that we get here in Australia. Now, there is a few other members of the brown snake family that can reach lengths of around the two meter mark, the dugites, the Western Browns, things like this. But the Eastern Brown reaches this two meters mark more regularly than the others. There's a few reliable reports every year of two meter brown snakes and plenty of non-reliable reports. That being said, the record for an Eastern Brown is up over 2.4 meters in length. Now that's starting to get to the sort of size that we would expect to see from things like Kalgas and uh, coastal taipans. So yeah, these guys don't have, just have a massive distribution, they also grow to be potentially massive venomous snakes. 2.4 meters long, the biggest brown snakes in the country. Number five is that these guys don't just grow to be the biggest of the brown snake family, they're also the most venomous. Now, this is saying a bit because all the brown snakes, or the vast majority of them, are very, very highly venomous snakes. The vast majority are amongst the most venomous snakes on the planet. But this guy, he takes the cake. These guys actually have an LD50 rating, which is how we measure toxicity of 0.053 milligrams of venom per kilogram of body weight to basically be a lethal dose. Now, we can cover how this LD50 works in another video. If you like, leave it down in the comments. But if we put this in perspective to uh, say something like the Black Mamba, this guy works out to be somewhere between five and six times more potent in terms of his toxicity, his venom, than the Black Mamba does. So by far the most venomous of all the brown snakes. Now, this is little wonder because he's not just more venomous than most of the brown snakes, he's more venomous than pretty much any snake on earth. In fact, the eastern brown snake comes in in second place when it comes to the world's most venomous snakes, behind only the inland taipan. So there you go. This guy's not only the most venomous of the brown snakes, he's the second most venomous snake on the planet today. Number six is that despite being the most venomous of all the brown snakes, second most venomous snake on earth, the venom of the eastern brown snake, the composition of it, actually changes with age. Now, there's a common myth that snakes are more venomous when they're babies as when they're adults and things like this, but in these guys, it's not really the case. What we've basically found is that in adult eastern brown snakes, their venom is basically a mix of cocktails that some of them affect your nervous system. So they shut your muscles down, which in turn shuts, you know, your heart down, your breathing down. But they've also got chemicals, components, that affects your ability to, to clot, to, to stop bleeding. So it causes things like stroke and internal bleeding, things like this. Now, what we've you know, fairly recently, in the last several years, discovered is that juvenile brown snakes basically seem to lack 
the clotting component. Their venom works almost entirely on the nervous system. Now, the theory currently behind this is that this particular kind of venom works very well on things like skinks. A lot of uh, animals that feed on this sort of prey use this kind of venom. And as they grow older, they start to include more mammals and things in their diet. The clotting agents or anti-clotting agents start to come into effect. So whether it's because of diet is yet to be proven, but the current theory is these guys, their venom changes as they go through the sizes and start eating different sorts of prey. So yeah, Eastern brown snakes, their venom changes with age. Number seven. Now, while these guys do have an incredibly potent venom, they don't have much of it. Basically, these guys have a very small venom yield. Now, the average venom yield for a brown snake does change geographically from different parts of the country. Uh, in Queensland, the average venom yield is somewhere around 11 milligrams, compared to in South Australia, where the average venom yield is closer to three milligrams. The uh, highest yield that I can find any evidence of was uh, a milking done by a famous herpetologist, Eric Worrell, of a 2.1 meter brown snake that got 41 milligrams of venom. So, you know, far higher than average, but yeah, on average, three to 11 milligrams of venom. Now, for the sake of comparison, if we compare this to another famous Australian snake of roughly equivalent size, like the tiger snake, you'll see just how much smaller this venom yield is. So the tiger snake's average venom yield is somewhere around 35 milligrams of venom per bite, with the record being up around 180 milligrams. So, you know, well more than double the record of an Eastern Brown and triple when it comes to average venom yield. So yes, very potent venom, but these guys have a very small venom yield. Fact number eight is that the Eastern Brown snake doesn't just have a small venom yield, they've also got fairly small fangs. You see, the fangs of the average Eastern Brown Snake are somewhere about 2.8 millimetres in length, with large Eastern Brown Snakes having fangs up to sort of 3 millimetres, 3.5 millimetres in length. Now, if we compare this to, again, the Tiger Snake, their fangs average 3.5 to 5 millimetres in length. So, you know, potentially just shy of double in size. And uh, on the extreme end of Australian Snakes, the Coastal Taipan has fangs a whopping 13 millimetres in length. So, you know, in the scheme of Australian snakes, these guys have fairly short fangs. Now, in some ways, this makes a lot of sense. You see, people get hyped up when it comes to venom, that venom is designed to kill people, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Venom is designed to kill their prey, and this guy is equipped with such toxic venom, he doesn't need big fangs. He doesn't have to make sure every drop gets in there. He's just got to break the skin, and whatever it is that he's bitten is going to die. So our snakes have never had a push to evolve the big fangs that some snakes overseas do. So very small fangs on the eastern brown snake. Now, what does this have to do with people? How does this translate to safety and danger? Fortunately, it means that having such short fangs, preventing an, a bite from an eastern brown snake can be a little bit more simple than preventing bites from snakes elsewhere. You see, at 2.5 millimeters in length, or 2.8 millimeters in length, you're significantly upping the chances that something like a good pair of jeans is going to stop a bite compared to snakes overseas. If you're bitten by any of the vipers overseas, they're gonna go straight through a pair of jeans. But uh, thanks to this guy having short fangs, 2.8 millimeters on average, a uh, pair of jeans is generally adequate snake bite protection. So yeah, fact number eight, these guys have fairly small fangs. Fact number nine is that despite the name Eastern Brown Snake, uh, these guys actually come in a wide variety of colors and patterns. Now, while the vast majority of these guys are some kind of shade of brown, these guys range everywhere from jet black to fluorescent orange in color, with everything in between, grays and reds, browns, tans, all sorts of colors. But yeah, black to fluorescent orange, so lots of different colors. They also come in different patterns. Now, the vast majority are plain in color, but when they're born, a lot of eastern brown snakes actually have a little bit of pattern. Often they've got sort of a, a bit of a, a black helmet on top of their head and a little black band behind that. But some of their babies are born really strongly banded the entire way down their body. And occasionally, adults actually keep this color, these banding, these stripes, all the way through into adult life. So you can end up with eastern brown snakes who are striped from the tip of their head to the tip of their tail. So yeah, despite the name eastern brown snake, you can't really identify these guys based on color or pattern because Eastern browns don't just come in brown, they come in all kinds of colors and patterns. And lastly, number 10, and that is that despite the short fangs, despite the small venom yield, the, uh, the brown snakes as a family, with the Eastern brown leading the charge, are responsible for more snake bites and more snake bite deaths 
than any other snake in Australia. Now, according to the Australian Snake Bite Project, which was a study that basically tracked snake bites for the period of about 10 years, uh, the Eastern Brown, or the Brown Snake family, accounted for 41% of Australian snake bites during the, uh, the time their project was running. Now, 41% of bites, they also accounted out of the 23 deaths in that time for 75 percent of Australian snake bite deaths. So yeah, just under half of all of our bites, but pretty much three quarters of all of our human deaths. So yeah, the Eastern Brown Snake leading cause of snake bite death in Australia. Now, this isn't because, like a lot of people imagine, he's a mean snake or an aggressive snake. While these guys can be temperamental, they're one of the most misunderstood of all Australian snakes. They basically evolved in open habitats where fleeing is often not an option. Standing and fighting is the only way to survive. So he's not a jerk. He's just bred for the environment he lives in. The reason they bite so many people is because they have a massive distribution. They live in places like Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Townsville, uh, Adelaide, most of our capital cities. So in terms of human interaction, these guys come way ahead simply because they live where people live. And that's what makes them dangerous. The things that are the most dangerous to us aren't the things that can do the worst things to us. They're the things that are the most likely to come in contact and do something to us. So yeah, the Eastern Brown Snake, the leading cause of snake bite and snake bite death in Australia. So there you have it guys, that's 10 facts that I think you didn't know about one of the most famous snakes in all of Australia. Let me know in the comments below which ones you knew, which facts were new to you, and uh, what other animals you'd like to see covered. But other than that, thank you as always for watching guys. Make sure if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel, check us out on Facebook, check on back next week. Uh, there's lots more wildlife content coming, and uh, as always, be nice to wildlife, especially snakes. Have a good one and take care.